All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Matt, play fast football. All right, I got uh, one of our subscribers, Piper Scott, sent me uh, a message. Could we do something on organizing and structuring a practice? So figured I would just go through a little bit of our Monday practice today, what we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it, and then talk a little bit about why or how people would practice different ways. Make sure you check out some of our sponsors, Dome Hats, headwear company we use with Play Fast in the school that I'm currently at. Online hat builder, you can generalize, uh, I'm sorry, you can build and customize your own hat. You can make it however you want, snapback, fitted, Velcro. You can put uh, things on the back of the hat, like our Velcro hats have our, our motto on the back. You can change the style of the hat, you can change the color of the panels, you can change the button at the top, you can change some of the color of the eyelets, the stitching, completely customizable so that you can build your own hat for your school, team, business, all right, or whatever it is that, that you need to do. Every hat has a story. Make sure you let Dome help you tell the story of your hat. Baker Sporting Goods, company I use for uh, spirit pack items for our players, coaches, sideline gear, our uniforms are distributed from Baker Sports. Anytime we want to do an online store for uh, players or fans or sometimes teachers, we use Baker Sporting Goods, so make sure you check them out. Just Play Football, digital software, taking your program to the next level. Uh, it's got unique fe uh, quiz features where you can uh, ask your kids questions on a game plan, on a playbook that they have to answer in a quiz fashion. You can see who's been on there, who's answered the questions, what they've got right, what they've got wrong, and now you can, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you can figure out, get a little bit better understanding of what they actually know about the game plan or about the playbook. So make sure you check out Just Play Football, Game Strat, Sideline Replay Company we use. Uh, if you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, I suggest you check out Game Strat. We absolutely love it. Customer friendly, they want to do what's right for high school coaches. Uh, so make sure you give them a chance. If you are looking to switch from one of your other sideline replay systems, make sure you check out GameStrat. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. We have one that we hook up in the off season in our weight room. You can bring them out on a practice field and put them, if you cement the two by four or put something in the ground, you can hook it up there. We get thousands of reps without needing a partner. Elbows in, thumbs up, working on all the proper mechanics of striking. All right, so that kids how, kids understand where their elbows need to be, where their thumbs need to be, what hand placement is, where their eyes need to be, how to come out of their stance, roll their hips. So make sure you check out Difference USA. High and tight ball security training aid that has uh, sensors inside the panels. Ball has to be held in the proper high and tight position with the proper points of pressure. If you do that, you will hear an auditory beep. When you hear that ball beep, you've got it right. Now try and do drills or run the football. All right, in your indie or everyday drills, whatever you're doing, try and run the ball like that and keep the beat the entire time. If you were doing bag drills or different uh, cut drills or different drills or jump cut drills with the back, use that ball, keep it high and tight, make sure it beeps the whole drill. If you lose the beat throughout the drill, you're doing something wrong. All uh, right, maybe the wrist came down, maybe the elbow came out, but you lost the point of pressure somewhere, so that ball is not secured properly. Uh, if ball security is job security. You hear us getting better, make sure you check out high and tight. Stand Perfect, a training aid that we use to build consistent and reliable stances. It saves a lot of time and effort for us. If we got five of them set up with our own line, we can get every old lineman where they need. We could have the center obviously square, and then we could have the guys on the right with a right heel toe stagger, four to six inches, whatever we want to be in that stance. Next group rolls in to do a rep. All right, even if it's just early get offs or working on whatever you're doing. Next group rolls in, they jump right in. The right guard knows this is the stance he needs to be in. Right tackle knows, left guard, left tackle knows. Do it with receivers. Get them in the stance you want to be in, inside foot, uh, foot up. However far apart you want the back foot, however wide you want the back foot, it's up to each individual coach. But stances are something that need to be worked on day in and day out. They don't take talent. It's something that all kids need to understand how to do and how to perfect. So if you use Stand Perfect, you will not only build consistent, reliable stances, but you will save yourself a lot of time and energy. So make sure you check out Stand Perfect. So. When talking about practice plans, the first thing you got to understand is your practice plans have to be conducive to what you're trying to accomplish that day. They are not going to look the same every day. There's going to be templates where they look the same on certain days, but then there's going to be other days where you're trying to accomplish different things. So your practice plan needs to set out to accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish that day in practice. Okay, so for us, this is a Monday uh, out of season in the spring, so we didn't have a game on Friday night. So this is a little bit different Monday for us, but we have a game this Friday night. So you've got to keep in mind with your practice plan, you've got to keep in mind what you want to accomplish, 
how many players do you have? How many coaches do you have? What facilities do you have? How many fields do you have? What are you trying to film? How many filmers do you have? There's a lot of things that go into it before you make the practice plan because you have to understand the practice plan has to fit your staff, your players, your facilities. You can't do things in a practice plan just because you read it in a book or saw it on a video somewhere if your facility or your staff or your guys, uh, you don't have the people to do it. So there's days where I have some adjunct guys that come from off campus and there's days where maybe they can't make it. There's days where some of my teachers have family responsibilities and maybe they can't make it. All right, it's kind of a, in high school sometimes it's a fluctuating deal. You may not have everybody uh, where you need them to do all the drills that you want to do. I normally will be the uh, Swiss Army knife kind of rolling in and out of positions where guys can't show up that day. So it's a constant work in progress. Uh, you you, you got to keep adjusting all the time. You've got to improvise and adjust. You've got to deal with adversity. And you just make sure that you get a practice plan going that is there to accomplish the goals of that day. All right, so for us today, we are going to watch film first. We had a little scrimmage Friday afternoon, so I'm going to take the guys in and show some film. I think our quarterbacks are messing up some RPO reads, so I want to take a look at that. I want to take a look at where our meshes were with the running back to make sure we can clean that up. I want to make sure our alignment understand our double teams and where we should be working. Had a couple issues with the H on uh, some kick and some bluff stuff with our path at the backside end, uh, making sure our receivers routes are correct, making sure we're running access stuff. And then on defense, making sure we got the front lined up right, we're in the right coverages when we did blitz, making sure that we hit the proper gaps with the proper coverage behind it. So we're going to show film first today. We won't actually get out onto the field until 3 o'clock. At 3 o'clock, we will dynamic flex. All right, our dynamic flex, when we do it right, takes us about six minutes. We have about 40 to 45 players out there in the spring right now, so it takes us about six minutes if we had a full varsity and JV and we had 70 to 75 kids, I would say it would probably take 10 minutes. But right now we've adjusted it to take about six minutes when we do it right. All the kids are there. We start on time. Coaches are on the whistle. Everybody knows what they're doing. It takes about six minutes. We'll then roll into our pursuit drill, which is uh, the pursuit drill we do is a little bit different. We've got five cones set up on each side. Outside the numbers, uh, each cone is five yards apart. So what ends up happening, there's five cones in the middle of the field. The kids are in five lines in front of the coach. We're usually doing some form of grass drill, up-down, or vertical jump. Players on the whistle will do an up-down. When they pop up, I will give a direction one way or the other. They have to sprint in a pursuit angle. The closer they are to that side, so the first guy on, if I point to my left, you're right on the camera. First guy on that side runs tight to the first cone. Next guy's got an angle to a cone that's five yards away. Middle guy's got an angle to a cone that's ten yards from that. All right, the fourth guy's got an angle to a cone that's 20 yards away, so it's a much higher angle. Last guy becomes the home run angle, the real deep high angle, trying to uh, get a ball carrier on the ground. So we do that because we feel like we get more reps. We feel like it's easier to teach. We can roll through 40 guys and, and get two or three reps each for each player in about nine minutes. So it gets the blood flowing right away. It gets practice going right away. It, get, it get guys, gets guys moving around. Uh, coaches are there to make sure we're doing it right. Make sure we are sprinting, make sure we are finishing on top of the cone, making sure our leverage position when we get to the cone is good. When they break it down, making sure every kid jogs outside the cone so that you have standards within each drill that you have to make sure that your assistant coaches hold the players true to that standard. So that will take us about nine minutes today, and then we'll go to what we call our sprint to shimmy finish on bag. So we put cones about 10, 15 yards away from half moon, uh, you know, the the – about probably four feet long, however they are, half moon, that lay flat on one side and they're semi-rounded. We put those on the ground and we make our kids sprint full speed, the distance up to the bag. When they get to the bag, then they have to near foot, near shoulder, shimmy. So near foot, come to balance, near foot, near shoulder. If it's right foot, that needs to be right foot up, left foot starting to shimmy, right, left, right, left, getting ready to explode through a bag, always finish with a tackle on a bag. So we're teaching them to sprint. Close the distance. When you get close enough to strike, we got to start to shimmy, and then we want to strike on the rise. Kind of think of that, uh, think of that snake uh, mentality where you know you've got that coiled up snake and it's going to strike. Well, it can only strike so far when it's that coiled up. So you want to make sure you don't strike too early. You want to make sure we don't strike standing up. We want to strike all right within the strike zone. When you can step on their toes or smell their breath, we need to shimmy to that point, and then when we strike, we need to be striking on the rise. High hands, club up, roll the hips, 
All right, all the good stuff. So do that drill for about 10 minutes. We'll go sometimes change it up, sprint on an angle. We'll go right foot up, that's near foot, near shoulder. Then we'll change it, we'll go left foot up, near foot, near shoulder. Try to get ourselves, each kid, you know, maybe three to four reps in that drill. All right, and then we go to what we call a ping pong drill, which for us is a, it's a tempo drill. We set up two spacers about 30 yards apart. Each group has a coach and five skills that are gonna be in formations. Defense gets a call from me. They line up on one spacer. All right, we go down, set hut, snap the ball, see if there's any movement. We don't run a play. We just snap the ball, uh, see if, there, if we had any movements on. We hit the movement. As soon as the whistle blows, they have to sprint to the other spacer. While they sprint to the other spacer, they get their eyes to me. I signal in whatever the call is. They now have to sprint, get the call, line up to the formation that's already down there on the other spacer, down set hut, snap the ball if we had any blitzes or D-line moving on, turn around and sprint back to the other side, get their eyes to the sideline to find me, get a call, go get lined up. So what we're doing is we're working on air, it's formation wreck, but we're also making the kids run 30 yards, all right, which is more realistic to a game. And while running, we make the kids turn and find the sideline because we don't huddle and we don't give one player the call and he echoes it. We want all 11 defensive players to get the call from the coordinator. So while they're doing that, we're working on sprinting from formation to formation, getting a call from the sideline, getting your eyes to the new formation, getting the coverage set, getting the front set, all right? And it's really a, a way for us to work on tempo, a way for us, again, to keep the blood flowing. Those first three periods, not a lot of contact involved, not a lot of things going on today as far as contact is concerned, Monday of a game week. So we're trying to run around, we're trying to get the energy up, we're trying to get the tempo up, and we're trying to accomplish things that you need to play good football. We're trying to uh, work on pursuit angles. We're trying to work on close the distance, shimmy near foot, near shoulder, strike on the rise on a bag. We're trying to work on running around and finding formations and getting lined up and getting the coverage called correctly. All right, then we'll go to a water break. Coming out of the water break, we'll go to defensive indie. All right, whatever the defensive coaches feel like they need to cover from the Friday night scrimmage. There's no new install today. Maybe one formation that we have to line up to that we haven't lined up to yet, but shouldn't be any new install today. So it's really about repping the things that we need to rep. Maybe it's it's working on our, our transitions with our DBs. Maybe it's working on press coverage with the corners. Maybe it's working on reads with the linebackers after their everyday agility drills. Maybe it's working on whatever our keys and our reads are and making sure we're correct. Maybe it's, you know, safeties, uh, you know, it, working on forcing runs or playing cutback and how do we do that square, how do we vice the ball square and fold inside. Maybe it's safeties in, in our palm drill. Maybe it's our two read drill, maybe it's safeties keeping inside leverage on two, maybe it's working on certain routes that have been giving us trouble. So that's what we expect our guys to get accomplished in Indy today. There's no new install, so you don't have to spend time on install. So it could be a lot of good EDDs, a lot of good drills, get offs, stances, starts, eyes, eye discipline, a lot of good things that in 15 minutes you can get accomplished in Indy. Then we roll the half line coverage drill. So we'll go to our half line coverage drill where we are working our two read palms coverage versus two open receivers. Then at some point we'll change and play some cover two to two open receivers. And then at some point we'll change and play some man free to two open receivers. Trying to get our guys to understand the difference between pattern match, spot drop, all right, or, or you know, country spot zones and man to man. When do we have to push when we're matching patterns? When do we not have to push because we're spot dropping and we have a flat player? Now we just need to drop, hook, curl, flood the zone on that side. When do we need to run with things man to man? All right, so we're trying to work on all the things in that drill, and then we're trying to rotate guys so that our safeties play low and high. They have to play the low part of palms and they have to play the high part of palms, so we're working on that. Trying to get a bunch of reps. It's set up for the offense. They have uh, right side half line, left side half line, so we're getting a ton of reps. Cards are drawn up. Right side goes, left side gets their route. They're ready to go. As soon as we go from that side, whistle blows, we go over and we go on the left. So in that 15 minutes, we're trying to get as many half-line reps as we can possibly get so that we can see our coverages on the back end matched up. All right, then from half-line, we'll go to a defensive team period working against a scout group. Today's defensive team period focuses only on base coverages and what we call robber, which is one low, one high, one rat. However you want to look at it, that's what we call robber. So it's a man-to-man -man defense uh, with, a, with, with safeties extra playing low hole, high hole. All right, so today's, uh, in, in the script today, there is only base defense with D-line games, 
and our base coverages and then uh, our robber covers. There are no blitzes in today. Tomorrow will be a day where we go back and look at some blitzes, but today is defensive team base versus scout, base coverages, robber coverage, some D-line stunts mixed in. All right, another water break. Then we'll go to offense. Offense will do screens on air. Just put screens in like last week, haven't really run up a bunch. So we'll come back for the first 10 minutes of the offensive period. Quarterbacks will get loose during that water break. They'll throw a little bit. All right, and then we will come back and do screens on air. So we'll work on uh, we'll work on the communication, the signals of how we get the screens called. Are we running it to a two-receiver side or a three-receiver side? Make sure we know who the screen player is. Make sure the O-line knows which way the screen's going. Getting center guard, guard out so the tackles stay on, and we're working center guard, guard out. So now we got to work and make sure we understand that the guard knows if I'm running the screen to my side, I'm running flat to the sidewalk. If they're running the screen away from me, I become the rat kill guy. Center should be the alley player. All right, every time inside the kick out of the sidewalk lock, the center should be wrapping in the alley. Backside guard has to become the rat kill player or the cleanup player. So now that changes based on where they are. Screen to them, sidewalk, screen away. You've got to be the rat kill guy. The center is the alley guy every time. So we're going to work on the timing, work on getting those linemen out where they belong. Uh, we'll do it on air. We'll, sometimes we'll put hand shields out there for the linemen to block. But that's a 10-minute period right now where we want the communication right. We want the signals right. We want to know who the receiver is that's catching the screen. We want to know where the screen's going so the other receivers know how to flatten out and protect versus press or man coverage, how we can protect that receiver. We want to get that receiver's steps correct, uh, fast hands and feet up the field, and then bring himself back behind the line so that we can catch the ball as tight to the line of scrimmage as possible. All right, but at the same time, moving our way back inside like a tunnel screen and not being too deep, but at the same time, not being ahead of the line and getting a penalty because you threw the ball downfield with pulls. So we'll do that drill on air, and then we'll go to our, our offensive scout period where it's our offensive team working against a scout group. Today we're working on runs and RPOs only. So in our offense, um, any, of the, any of those plays, the ball can be thrown to access or RPOs. So we, when we have only have one offensive period, we don't feel like we necessarily need a passing period. Tomorrow we will have a passing period in because it's an offensive day. But on a defensive day at the end, we get about 35, 30 minutes of offense, and we're going to clean that up today with 10 minutes of screens on air. And then we're going to go with our offensive team RPO drill, which every play in the script is some type of run with an RPO, access throws, all right, or something where there are reads involved, all right, in our RPO game. And then when we're done, we'll run three half casters today, all right. So we try to keep our practice as moving and, and the tempo as high as possible so that we don't have to stay forever. Afterwards, we'll run our half casters. They'll all be timed. So all line, D line will have 19. Big skills will have 16. And then wide receivers, corners will have 15, something along those lines. Um, and then, uh, you know, some days if I start with 13 and 14 and 18, uh, what I'll do is if I'll, I'll make that the time for the first one. And then the second one, I'll back it up a second. And then the third one, I'll back it up a second to make sure we're all trying to make our times. We always want to time. Our half gassers are sprints that we're running because that's the only way we can kind of guarantee the effort we're getting out of players. So as you can see, we're on the field at three. We try to be off the field by probably 5.05 or 5.10. Uh, just a personal philosophy of me. I don't like being on the field for longer than two hours, two hours and ten minutes. I think the kid's attention span gets lost. I think you end up, you know, you stay out there for three or four hours trying to work, trying to grind, trying to be mentally tough and outwork everybody. But if you're not getting good quality reps with a lot of, mental awareness of what's going on. I think sometimes you're wasting your time. So I stay right in that two hour, two hour and five, 10 minute uh, frame. That's just me. That's just how I practice. So hopefully this helps uh, Piper uh, talk about organizing and structuring your practice plan. Practice plans can be different. All right, obviously some people use periods and they've got 25 minute periods or whatever they do. This is what's comfortable for me. This is what I like. This is what I know. So my coaches have to adapt and adjust to what I want to do. So this is how we run our practices. This is our practice for today. Hopefully this helps with organizing and structuring practices. A lot of different ways to do it. A lot of guys out there that probably have better practice plans than this one, but uh, you know, hopefully this helps give you a little bit of uh, an idea of what we're trying to do. So I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast. Thanks for being subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button. Turn your notifications on. You'll know every time a video comes out or I do YouTube Live like I did on Saturday night when we went YouTube Live. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like or don't like 
the content or the presentation. That always helps me change up what I'm doing. Leave a comment or a message if I can see it and it's about the video or about other football videos. I will respond to you. And if it's something I can do, a comment like this, I can try and do a video on it. So, again, uh, if you're playing spring ball, if your game's this week, good luck. Stay healthy, stay safe, get everybody through it. Hopefully you get some good results. If you just ended your season and you're rolling into the summer, good luck to you. All right, remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will catch you guys next time.